Have you ever walked into church and seen someone else at church that you're like, what? No way. No way they're here. Well, that's what we're talking about today. See, in Luke 5, we read that the Pharisees show up at this house where Jesus is partying with, with Matthew and his friends, and they complain to the disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? How can this be? How can this be? That's their thoughts. And I got to tell you, I feel for the Pharisees in this moment. I feel for them. See, in all likelihood, the Pharisees, their families, their countrymen are actually victims of these people's sins. They are suffering because of the deeds of these willing agents of the enemy. Why would Jesus dignify them with his presence, let alone be enjoying it? See, this sort of indignation shown by the Pharisees is consistent with a heart that has refused to forgive. I don't blame them. It would be so hard to forgive such personal wrongdoing and moral corruption. This quote from Ray Steadman sums it up quite well, I think, and it goes like this. Forgiveness is that which we most enjoy, yet least employ. See, the Lord is more generous to us than we want to be to others. In fact, he is more forgiving than seems reasonable to us, at least in my relationships, maybe yours. Yet, this is not something to loathe, as the Pharisees do, but to rejoice and to emulate. See, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, and in doing so, he nuked any justification we may have for withholding forgiveness from others. Unforgiveness is a poison that robs us of the hope and joy God intends to cultivate in us, and it robs us of the hope that sees potential in others, not just problems. See, God wants to displace bitterness and rage and slander and malice with kindness, compassion, and a generous forgiveness. He wants to put that in our hearts. And as we deploy the discipline of forgiveness, God transforms our heart and positions us to participate in his redeeming work on this planet. Think about it. The very person you are holding a grudge against is a person the Lord cares about. See, lay down your grievances and wounding and seek their good. Work towards their salvation in Jesus and you will experience more of Jesus yourself because you'll be like him. Are reputations the currency of the kingdom or is it something else? See, in Luke chapter 5, we uh, covered that Jesus invited Matthew to come and follow him. He does. And then you know what he does? He throws a huge party and Jesus loves it. We read that Levi held a great banquet for Jesus and in his house, there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others who were eating with them. One of the beautiful things about our God is that his desire is is not aimed at transforming our reputation, but our hearts. See, this monumental task of transforming a heart is far beyond our comprehension, our capacity, only he can do it. The potential of a person to be transformed by God is not dependent on the person, nor is it the work of the person. See, God does the work, and God's involvement is what creates the potential. A spotless reputation and a spotless heart are are far from the same thing. See, See, God has prioritized the refinement of the heart over the maintenance of reputation. And a heart that is conforming to the way and the will of Jesus will do the same thing. It will ignore your own reputation and aim for the heart of others, regardless of their reputation. See, Jesus sat with Levi, or Matthew, and his irreputable friends to the detriment of his reputation and for the hearts of those that sat at the table with him. He sat down with them, he listened, he joked, he smiled, and he bid them come and follow. Matthew's crew was not simply instructed, but invited to see a new way of living via relationship. Jesus' way requires a tender heart towards another's deepest needs and and a thick skin towards others' assumptive insults. The only opinion that truly matters is the Lord's. And he cares more about your heart and the hearts of others than our reputations. So throw off, throw off anything that hinders you from the work of God, including a burdensome need to be esteemed by others. I have this question for you. Is there anyone that you've avoided being kind or genuinely friendly towards because of how you're being associated with them 
may impact your reputation. Consider seeking them out in some way. Ask them out to lunch. Be curious about them. Ask them questions about their life and interests. Avoid making it about winning an argument. Just listen and link what they speak uh, to those things that you felt or experienced in your own life. Seek to learn about them, and you may be surprised how the Lord can soften your heart towards them. Also, if you're struggling with conversation, consider the Ford method. <laughs> Ask them questions about one of these categories, family, occupation, recreation, or dreams. That's been helpful for me. Maybe it'll be helpful for you. If this video has blessed you, please like and subscribe to get more content to help you live and love like Jesus.